All right, welcome back. I apologize that last video got cut. My uh, recording software just stopped working. But anyway, let's continue our discussion. So we found the reactions for each of the elements, and we found the uh, reactions going on at the joints, A, B, and C. Now our joint load diagram is actually a diagram we use to show these reactions, this reaction, this reaction, and this reaction on the member. These, the, the ones I circled in purple, are the joint loads. That's what JL stands for. So if I, if I um, redrew, let's see, element one, element two, and it had the uh, point load here, P, then it had uh, the distributed load here, W, the distributed load um, W and P, or the point load P, these reactions, these reactions here, are the ones we're showing on the diagram itself. So here's element one. So if this shear was going down, uh, we're just going to show that going down here. And if this moment's going clockwise, uh, then we're going to show a clockwise moment here, right? Again, this shear is going down, so we're going to draw that shear going down. And this moment's going um, counterclockwise, so that means this moment's going to go counterclockwise. And then again here, uh, this shear is going down, that means this shear is going to go down. And this moment's going clockwise, that means this moment we're going to draw clockwise. Same thing here. We have a counterclockwise moment here, draw a counterclockwise moment here. We have a shear going down, we're going to draw a shear going down here. So our joint load diagram is actually the reactions happening at the joints shown on the elements uh, that we're analyzing. And that's how we can, um, well, that's, I guess that's the background of the joint load diagram. So hopefully now it makes a little bit more sense. Um, this is the diagram we use to come up with our joint load diagram. All right, so hopefully that cleared things up a bit for you guys.